Hi there, today we're going to investigate playing in keys other than G. Well, I know I felt like a bit of a grumpy cat when I first had to figure out how to do that. But it's not that hard, thanks to one of these devices here, called the Capo. So we're going to talk about how to do that and figure out how to play in other keys. There are two main times when you'll want to break out the Capo. One is to match the singer's voice and play in the key that the singer is singing in. And the other is when an instrumental tune is written in a given key. You need to be able to play it in that key. I'll fly away. So the key of G open worked well for me to sing I'll Fly Away and it fit my voice just fine. When the Stanley Brothers recorded it in 1955, they played it in the key of A. You can think of wherever you could make a bar chord. In this case, A is at the second fret. B flat, B, C. Wherever you could put your first finger as a bar chord, that's where you would put the capo. So Ralph had his capo at the second fret. But he also had to compensate for the tuning of the fifth string. It now needs to be the equivalent of five frets higher than the open first string, which is now at the pitch of E. So one, two, three, four, five frets. I put my fifth string underneath that little spike I have to do that for me. And those two should be in tune. Sometimes it's just a tad sharp, so you adjust it and you're good to go. Ready for I'll Fly Away in the key of A. You'll hear it's higher. Some glad morning. I mentioned that I spiked my fifth string. Here's a picture of the spikes on my fifth string. That will allow me to play in A, B flat, B, and C. And when you put the string under the spike, it shouldn't be buzzing. So it's good to have them installed by somebody that really knows what they're doing. Get them drilled in there and put in at just the right distance. The other thing is you'll see there's a little gap between the spike and the fret. And that is so that when you're playing melodic style and you actually need to fret, get the pitch of that note on the fifth string, you can still sound it. Another common way of getting the notes on the fifth string to fret higher is to use one of these devices called a sliding fifth string capo. It looks like this when it's installed along the side of the neck. Some players like myself prefer the spikes because I actually fret the fifth string on licks. And if you have a fifth string capo along the side, it adds a little extra width to it. It makes it a little harder to play those notes. One thing you'll quickly find out when working with singers is that the gals tend to sing in a lot higher keys than the guys. So we just did I'll Fly Away in G for myself, A for the Stanley Brothers, but Gillian Welch and Alison Krauss did it in the key of D on the famous Oh Brother Where Art Thou recording. If we're following the concept of barring to get to the key that we want, A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D. To play in D, we'd be all the way up here at the seventh fret, which we can do. The only thing about that though, is you now basically have taken a saw and cut away and thrown away the last seven frets of your banjo. So another solution would be to actually learn how to play in the keys of C and D without using a capo. That goes beyond the scope of this particular video, but it seems somebody I know has written entire books about that subject. All of that's not to say that you'll never play with the capo in a higher position. The Osborne brothers recorded Rocky Top in the key of C and that high banjo sound is an identifiable part of the song.
One thing that might surprise you is that many of Earl Scruggs' famous recordings, including Foggy Mountain Breakdown, were actually recorded in the key of G sharp. This is not because he chose to use a capo at the first fret, but rather the entire band would tune their instruments up a half step to make their sound much more dynamic. Before discussing instrumental tunes using the capo, let's take a look at the history of the capo which goes back as far as something as primitive as a pencil being clamped on with some rubber bands and why you can get that to work. You can see that we have evolved and somebody came up with this great design along the way which is a piece of elastic that will pull around your neck. This originally was about 99 cents when it came on the market. I think it's up to about 269 where you can still get one of these today. The cost of inflation and everything. A common type of capo being used today has this spring action. Sort of works as a clamp there and that works fine. Be sure to get one that is designed for banjos. It'll say banjo and mandolin, smaller. If you get the full guitar size of this, the spring is so powerful that it will pull all your strings out of tune. The advantage of these is you always know where it is. People, when they aren't using it, just clamp it up there on their headstock. I recommend getting a capo that is adjustable. This has a little thumb screw on the back. That way you're putting just the right amount of pressure to keep the strings from buzzing, but not so much that you pull yourself out of tune. Notice that I have the capo right next to the fret. That also helps you keep it in tune. You'll also want to be aware if your neck has a slight curve to it called a radius neck, you need to have a capo that also has a slight curve to it. You can see that that has more of a curve than the standard flat neck capo. One last thing to remember in regards to capos is to match the size of the capo with the size of your instrument. So if you're going to play a tiny banjo, be sure you get a tiny capo. Just like the key of G is the easiest for banjo players, the keys of A and D are the easiest for mandolins and fiddles. It is possible to play in the key of A without using a capo. It's somewhat rare. It was championed by a banjo player named Don Reno, and I will demonstrate the style. Having just demonstrated two different ways to play Red Hair Boy, I will say that the tabs you will find most likely will be in the key of G, designed to be played with a capo at the second fret to put it in the key of A. Devil's Dream is another key of A fiddle tune. Play it with a capo on. You'll be way up here at the seventh fret in some versions. Which brings up the point that you should practice key of A fiddle tunes with the capo on don't think that you can practice it in the key of G and show up at your jam and be able to play it. Notice that when you don't have the capo on, your finger is at a fret dot, the seventh fret marker. When you put the capo on, that seventh fret now does not have a fret marker, so it'll look different. You'll find yourself missing notes. There are literally hundreds of fiddle tunes that were written in the key of A. Here are just a few of the more famous ones. So be sure to practice them with your capo on. There are several famous songs that were designed to be played in a specific key. Two of the more famous ones that show up at bluegrass jam sessions are called New Camp Town Races, which gets played in B flat, so capo three frets, and the Herschel Sizemore tune called Rebecca, which gets played in B, so you'd be capoing four frets and spike your fifth string to B. A couple notes in regards to tuning. When you turn your tuner on, be sure it says 440. That's standard pitch. If it's higher, 441, you're going to be out of tune with everybody else, even though you tune to your tuner. 
The other thing is if you know you're going to be playing a song in the key of A, put the capo on to tune. Right now I'm in G. Everything sounds great. And when I go to put the capo on, most likely it's going to cause the strings to go sharp. So I will need to retune. And notice you can get those notes in tune with the capo on. It'll slide right underneath the capo. So be sure to retune with the capo on when playing in the key of A. Another aspect of tuning is deciding what to do with the fifth string. When in A, we usually tune the fifth string to A. B flat, B flat on the fifth string, and so on. But you get to a point to where if you're playing in keys like D or E, you're just looking for a note that blends in with the chord. Bill Monroe wrote a song called Brown County Breakdown that's in the key of E, so my D shape now with the capo on actually becomes an E chord, and I have the fifth string tuned to a B. I'm just looking for a note that blends in with the chord. As previously mentioned, the key of D is another favorite key of fiddle players and mandolin players. All of these are very common songs that you'll hear at your local jam session. Playing in the key of D is a subject matter for an entirely different video. But to just briefly touch on the matter, you'll have to make a choice. Do you play in the key of D without using the capo, as in the first version of Liberty? And in this one, we leave the fifth string at G so that we can play melodically. Or do you capo at the second fret and play out of the key of C, with the fifth string tuned to A as in the second version below? I sure am a happy kitty now, knowing when to use my capo.